as always, um, joined by such a wonderful group of people tonight on this special episode of Picky Friday. And of course, according to the alignment of the stars, yes, that's right, folks, you all know it's that special time of the week where we spend some quality time together and basically nerd out about all things figure, Funko, merchandise, memorabilia, related of all kinds, shapes, colors, and sizes. You better believe anything of that sort you're going to find right here on this channel. Love the Power Ranger swag. Dude, trust and believe, when it comes down to Power Rangers, I'll probably be um, the biggest fan you'll ever meet. I mean, this whole wall right here is dedicated to just that, you know, so <laughs> you best believe. I mean, that's my childhood right there. Really, that's most of my childhood, you know. But, <clears throat> apologies. Um, great time. Oh, yes, it is indeed a great time to be alive. Lara Solano. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I don't, I don't know if you saw it already, Lara. Let me, uh, let me back it up for you. I don't know if you can see it, right? But I mean, just like, uh, like I said, I'm coming at you guys live um, from my TikTok and, of course, from my YouTube channel. But uh, I've already had two requests already. You know, this is the. The ranger wall right here, you know, as you can see, um, there's uh, some weapons. We have uh, the shelf up there dedicated to them. Uh, I have about two pictures um, that were actually signed uh, by the actors themselves. Um, Austin St. John, the uh, red ranger, and of course the one next to it is Jason David Frank, which of course is the green and white ranger. But that's best served for another time because uh, that's not what about that's not uh, what tonight's episode is all about. Uh, but before we get started into all of that, um, please, if you haven't already, uh, please do me a favor uh, and go grab yourself like a snack if you want to, uh, something to drink, or if you haven't had dinner yet, hey, go go grab some dinner. You know, heck, don't worry about me. I, I already have my dinner, or um, I will be having my dinner shortly afterwards, and uh, I got me something to drink right here. Not alcoholic, of course, because you know me. I don't touch that stuff. Of course, half the people I talk to can vouch for me on that, but that's just me. You know, heck, that's just me. Uh, but I do hope that you guys had a good day today. Um, I decided to actually take the day off because uh, I'm not going to point fingers, but uh, I was told, you know, uh, I needed it. I needed a day off, so I took it. You know, heck, so why not? <sighs> and if you guys are wondering uh, where the co-hosts are, they're actually on lockdown right now because um, if I let them loose in the room right now, like they'll do their normal things. Last time... They nearly knocked over one of my lights, you know, so I'd really kind of avoid that situation. You ever meet any of the actors? Actually, dude, yes. Um, I've met um, the first and second generation of uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I've met um, all of them except for the original Yellow Ranger, but that's only because um, she actually died Back in the 19, uh, back in the 1990s, I believe it was um, uh, 93. Uh, she was actually in an accident and it took her life. You know, and honestly, that was a very, very sad day for um, the Power Ranger history of all kinds. You know, but I mean, I know that um, she was an extremely great person. You know, her name was uh, Tui Trang. He, he don't even, they're. Uh, G Money, you want to specify real quick, man, or do you want to get your spell check out going? I mean, because I mean, I don't really know what you're talking about, my man. Sorry, but um, yeah, um, her name was Tui Trang. Um, she was uh, one of the original yellow uh, pi uh Power Rangers, I'm sorry, uh, but she was uh, actually uh, taken from us due to a car accident, you know. And I mean, again, that was a very sad day for Power Ranger history. I hate that, really. I hate that I didn't get the chance to meet her, but. I do know that, uh, like all the other actors and actresses that I did meet, uh, she was probably um, one of them who, uh, just one of the greats, you know? If you could be any of the Rangers, which would you pick and why? Oh, that's easy. Uh, I would pick uh, the original Red Ranger. And that's only because, um, like, I mean, it's it's kind of obvious, you know, uh, red is my favorite color. Um, he, uh, he was the original leader. Uh, before uh, Tommy took over, and um, I love, I respected him so much because um, he also took, um, he also took uh, karate, and um, that actually, like, he was also very knowledgeable about a lot of things, you know, and uh, I felt like he was one of the biggest sources of inspiration to uh, to get me into the series, you know, 
And that's that's just me, honestly, to answer your question, Alicia, Alicia Page. Who can't even spell any strong talk? <laughs> hey, you know what? Um, uh, Jacinto, we can't be mean to the children. You know, we can't be mean to the kids. It's not my fault he was raised on Ebonics. You know, that's okay. I mean, I understand, you know, hey, God bless him, be with him. That's fine, you know, heck, really. But um, I appreciate you so much for the for the share. Really, I appreciate you so much. But um, we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I want to say uh, hello and welcome back to those of you guys who are just joining us. And um, just um, to uh, to give a little recap for those of you guys who are new here. Basically, what I do, me being a figure collector, and uh, but I collect like merchandise and memorabilia. What I do is I show it off here, like certain characters or certain pieces. And um, I talk about their history and uh, basically what makes them who they are, you know. And I'm talking like a range from things like Marvel, uh, DC, Power Rangers, um, television series, movies. You best believe anything of that sort. It's going to be right here because I'm a big fan of all that stuff. I can never really take I can never really truly pick one fandom because uh, I've seen so many and I've grown with so many, you know. So I want to be able to share uh, as much as possible, you know. But that's just me. Um, Abe, thank you so much, uh, for the follow, uh, Samantha Bryant. Yes, I am a huge, huge Star Wars fan. I love that show. I love that series. Me too. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. What's your favorite movie? Ooh, Alicia. Woo. That's, that's a tough one. Honestly, I've seen like probably enough movies to go to topple Mount Everest. You know I mean? That's, that's not like an understatement. That's legitimately uh me let's see here favorite movie that's a tough call honestly i don't know if i could pick just one hmm but um i guess if i had to pick one movie that i could watch over and over and never get bored with i would definitely have to give it to um a movie called the warriors i don't know if you've seen it it's from the 1970s it's a uh, it's a really good movie, honestly. You should look it up if you get the chance. Am I a Kylo Ren fan? I mean, um, I I don't dislike Kylo Ren because I know that in the beginning he was you know he was brainwashed you know by the Sith and everything. But all in all, he made the right decisions and uh, he became a better person and he accepted who he finally was, which of course Ben Solo, which of course you know is Han Solo's kid, you know. I'm a huge collector of comics, etc. Hey. Um, what, uh, what, what kind of comics do you delve in? Honestly, I've actually got a few comic books, uh, in, um, a drawer over there. Most of them are Marvel. A few of them are DC, but me, I am a huge, uh, Spider-Man and, uh, Miles Morales fan, honestly. Uh, but to answer your question, um, Laura, my favorite TV show, uh, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you would count Power Rangers, you know, because technically speaking, it's a TV show, and uh, I grew up with it. I can watch it, never get bored with it, you know. <laughs> I don't know if you're watching. Yes, huge Dragon Ball Z fan, uh, Samantha. I grew up with that one. I grew up with um, uh, Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball series like that was took place with Kid Goku. Sending you my likes to get views. I'm going to watch a movie with Brittany now. Have a good life. Hey, Jacinto, thank you so much for the likes, and I appreciate you for stopping by, man. You too enjoy your movie, and have a great night, a great evening. In your opinion, who plays the best Peter Parker? Oh, let's see. Well, I mean, to me, um, honestly, I feel like um, each Peter Parker has um, their own strengths, however, if you will. Like um, Tobey Maguire, uh, he was the first Spider-Man that I watched on the live action series. But um, the first Peter Parker that I ever watched like entirely um came from the uh the 90s cartoon series like i don't know if you if you watched that one but that um i feel like uh he was the one who solidified uh peter parker as a whole you know because um he dealt with like so so much and i feel like he was the biggest source of inspiration for uh these future spider-man to be able to bring them to life you know so all in all i can't choose just one you know because um when it comes down to it, the first Peter Parker was always the animated one for me. And uh, I feel like he was just a trailblazer and the biggest inspiration for the other Peter Parkers to follow. That's just me, honestly. Like, really. Would you pick Mary Jane or Gwen? Hmm. Well, 
Hmm. I, I, I'm just me being both like a Peter Parker and a Miles Morales fan. Um, I would say I would probably have to go with um, Gwen, you know, and there's a reason for that. It's because, um, I mean, over the course, like uh, watching Mary Jane, just like the more like I watched her character, not from not only from like the animated series, but to like uh, up until the live action series, um, not to be confused with um, the one from the Tom Holland Spider-Man. No, that, that's a different breed of uh, Mary Jane. No, um, what I mean is like, um, it's just like, I don't know. She seems like um, just uh, toxic in my opinion, you know, because if, um, if you watched the 90s Spider-Man series, I mean, yes, it's true. She was um, understanding to a point, but um, it's just, I felt like um, she wouldn't, be able to uh to to stack up to the character today you know because um she um she um like in the there was that one episode where uh peter actually revealed himself to mary jane and then all of a sudden she jumps off the building you know like i i understand she was trying to prove a point but come on I'm, honestly why you gotta do that and um not to mention she like in the live action series she was dating um like she was dating that uh, astronaut, you know, but that's just me. That's best served for another time. What year were you born? I was born in the year 1991, you know, so that's, um, I mean, I'll, I'll leave the math to you because, ooh, I don't know, honestly. What did you think about the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? I loved um, Miles Morales, honestly. He is actually the first Spider-Man that uh, I have cosplayed, you know, and um, he's honestly my favorite, honestly. You are a year older. Hey, nice to meet you. 90s babies, yeah, you know, we're the best. <laughs> but uh, to answer your question, Laura, um, I've, I liked Miles, like all of the other, you know, um, but like, like I said, each Spider-Man, uh, they were molded differently and they each had their strengths and their weaknesses, you know. Hey, I'm glad he's your favorite too. Heck, uh, that's awesome, really. But, um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, folks. Um, we've actually strayed. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. We've actually strayed from the path of uh, the real reason we are here. You know what? Um, because um, not to, like, I mean, not to say that I'm not happy so much for the conversations. You guys are awesome and I appreciate you so much. But I would very much like to share with you guys, like, the reason, you know, we are here tonight. Alicia Page, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you so much. Uh, of course, that is due to the fact that uh, tonight um, we are actually going to be delving into the world of television, uh, more specifically uh, Netflix to be exact. And uh, tonight we're actually going to be introducing a very different uh, loving couple, if you will. Both of them um, are, who are basically survivors of a traumatic childhood, but they became warriors in the end, like even, and also, you know, they became a couple and got together, you know? So, uh, before we start, I hope you guys are settled in. I hope you guys are relaxing and just, just at peace. Because as you know, this is a green zone. No judgmental zone here. You're safe here. Oh, Alicia Page, thank you so much for the likes as well. So, uh, first up, we're going to actually be introducing a magical monster slayer who was actually so cool that he got his own theme music, you know, and his own theme song. Now, granted, it was from, um, like, an, an unlikely source, you know, and uh, one who became friends with him. But, um, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that uh, this whole series is based off of a game, then we would never have got to be able to see this awesome character come to life for the first time on the screen. So, please, ladies and gents, give a big Wolfpack welcome to... Mr. Geralt of Riviera, yes, of the, um, the the hired monster slayer of the Witcher series on Netflix, has fought his way into tonight's episode, and looking awesome as ever. Now, to tell the tale of the Witcher, um, unfortunately, um, I didn't have any coins, so I couldn't I couldn't you know toss a coin to your Witcher. So I'm hoping that uh, he will allow me to tell his tale. So. Give you guys a look at him. And as you can see, um, 
He doesn't have his armor on. This is the special um, unarmored version. But he is rocking the blade right behind him because that's one of his signature fighting styles. And, of course, he's rocking the medallion of the Witcher, as you guys can plainly see here. Okay. So, um, the Witcher now um, is, um, he, like I said, he had a very traumatic past. So, please, bear with me here. Now, um, shortly after being born, uh, Geralt's mother, um, Vicenna, gave him a way to undergo training to become a witcher at, um, now forgive me if I butcher these names here, folks, so please, I'm not really up to date with the slang, so please, forgive me. Um, it's uh, Kair Morhen, and of course, that's actually known as the stronghold of the witchers themselves. And over the course of time, Geralt survived uh, mutations during the trial of the grasses. And of course, that was thanks to uh, which he gained various witcher traits, you know, um, like uh, high resistance to injuries, uh, to poisons, and diseases as well. So basically, he became like the perfect fighting machine. But um, he also gained slow aging, but also infertility, since um, all witchers are actually infertile. And uh, he actually resisted the changes brought on by the trial of grasses uh, better than most of the witchers and his witcher brethren. And, and of course, um, it which encouraged his makers to actually sort of like perform even more dangerous and experimental procedures on him, making him lose all body pigmentations. You know, that includes blemishes, um, scars, um, like just all of that, you know, because, but because of his pale skin and white hair, he's also known in the elder speech as Gwyn Bleed, also known as, uh, the white wolf. That's one of the many reasons that I love that nickname, you know, because, uh, it speaks volumes, you know, because, because of the hair, you know, wolf, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, from the arduous training of the witchers, he became a master sword fighter and he learned how to use the signs, which, of course, are simple spells used by the witchers themselves, mainly made for all defensive purposes as well. You know, and um, when it comes down to it, despite his name, Geralt doesn't actually come from Riviera. Although he like sort of learned to mimic a Riviera accent, it was actually later knighted for a service by the queen of Riviera. But that's it. He never actually came from Riviera. Now, um, young witchers were actually encouraged to make up like sort of surnames, if you will, or surnames, I'm sorry, for themselves by Master Vesemir. And of course, uh, to make their names sound you know, more trustworthy, if you will, he once claimed his first choice was uh, Geralt Roger Eric Duhat Belagarde. Oh, man, that was a mouthful. Whew. But this was actually dismissed by Master Vesemir and is silly and just pretentious, if you will. And after completing his Witcher training, he received his wolf medallion and embarked into the world on his horse called Plotka. And now in terms of Witcher language, it literally means roach. <laughs> I know. And of course, uh, with that being said, he set out on his journey to become a monster slayer for hire. I know it seems like sort of platonic or stupid, if you will, to uh, start a, a journey to uh, slay monsters for hire, but it was actually a very lucrative business, you know, because um, he made it on his living due to the fact of the armor and, of course, the um, like the things he could do all over the world and, of course, the stuff he could buy. But that's just me, you know. <clears throat> now, I did find out some interesting facts about this guy. Now, um, I know that uh, I already stated that he wasn't from uh, Riviera, but uh, the place that he was from is actually called K Dwen, K A E D W E N. If you guys can pronounce that better than me, then please write it in the comment section. Um, <laughs> okay. And um, uh, I know that a lot of stipulation actually surrounded like his age, uh, but it was actually revealed that he's actually between the ages of 90 and 95 years old. You know what I mean? He's still pretty spry for his age. I mean, heck, he could take on full blooded monsters like nothing. I think that loca. <sighs> but um, probably the coolest fact that I found out, this is kind of a behind-the-scenes look. Um, the actor, Henry Cavill, who plays uh, Geralt of Riviera, is actually a huge nerd and a Witcher fan, too. Because due to the fact that um, like when it comes down to being a nerd, uh, it was revealed he built computers for fun, and uh, he played the Witcher game series in order to uh, sort of envision the character and, of course, step into the role. And um, what's cool about it is that uh, he actually scored the role out of over 200 actors who tried out for the role of Geralt. And I mean, me, I, that, that's that's just a that's a huge accomplishment due to the fact that uh, 
if uh, you're going to be trying out for one role and you get scored uh, over others that are 200, that's a big accomplishment because that shows that you're recognized. Woo! But heck, we're going to go ahead and move on. Oh, All right, girl. Just chill right there for me, will you, White Wolf? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. It was necessary. It was necessary. Okay. You guys good? Because I want to make sure that you're good before we move on. You good? All right. We're moving on then. Okay. So next up, um, we're going to be introducing, in my opinion, probably one of the biggest glow-ups in like this in this series, you know, because that's in my opinion, you know, because I'm not to mention a very powerful sorceress indeed. So please, ladies and gents, one more big wolf pack welcome to Miss Yennefer of Vangaberg. Yes, that's right, folks. The holder of the witcher's heart. And I don't mean that in a uh, literal way. You know, no, no, no. And she's actually graced us with her presence this fine Friday evening. And, of course, looking stunning as ever in her winter coat. Now, there's a reason why I said that uh, this character in particular has uh, had sort of a very, very cool glow-up face. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit it to you guys right now. Now, um, that's because, uh, like Geralt, she had... Um, a very, very dramatic and rough childhood, you know, because um, from the moment she was born, due to her um, con uh, congenital hunchback, uh, her father immediately detested her due to this deformity and due to the fact that it wasn't really her fault, you know, because this just that was just the way she was born, you know, so either way. And uh, she actually blamed her mother for it, claiming it was through, like, her side with uh, both mages and elven blood, not to mention her having... Uh, she had an abortion before that, you know, I apologize if that triggers anybody, please forgive me. Now, uh, her mother initially tried to protect Yennefer, believing it was by the will of the gods themselves, but her father still struck Yennefer until one day he left them both for someone else. Yes, that's right, folks. And of course, after this, her mother was very upset that her husband had left and also began to beat her own daughter, you know, and I mean, uh, honestly... Really? Mm. I, I'm i sorry. I just barely saw the message. I apologize. It was an event to go live together. I'm still not used to that yet, so please forgive me. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, wait. What was it? Oh, yeah. She, um, she actually, uh, at some point, due to her magical potential, she uh, received an invitation to the uh, Aretusa School for Sorceresses, where um, the Rectoris Tissia... De Vries became her teacher and, of course, her uh, mother figure, you know, if you will. Now, um, during the training, um, it really felt like um, it was really hard for Yennefer because she tried to take her own life by cutting her wrists. Apologies if that triggers anybody. I'm sorry. Did you hear he mentioned for a Marvel film by building a PC? Actually, yes, I did. I did hear about that, honestly. Now, um, there was stipulation on uh, Hen 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 I'm sorry, on whether or not Henry was going to try out for a Marvel role. I mean, I could see him as um, like a couple characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but um, he sort of kind of put that to rest due to the fact that uh, he admitted that he wasn't really, you know, into looking for other Marvel roles. But I don't know if it's been like proven or 100%, but I will tell you this. If he does make his way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he's going to do it great, really, because he did awesome as Geralt of Riviera. He did uh, awesome as uh, Superman, in my opinion. I think he did great, honestly. But um, I'm sorry. Back to the back to the story. Uh, yes. Um, even though she tried to take her own life, um, she actually survived. And Tissy claimed that uh, the purposeless purposefulness of her attempt was the only thing that prevented her from some from feeling like uh, contempt for her weakness, if you ever, and uh, continued her training. Now, in accordance with the sorceress's tradition, any kind of physical flaw, including her hunchback, was magically removed. And in that moment, um, it was when uh, it was the start of her glow-up phase, you know. And Jennifer actually made friends with her classmate Sabrina, and eventually passed her training and tests. And also, sometime later down the line. Uh, Yennefer set herself up in the town of Rinde, and ignoring King Herobert's rules that no magic uses could stay in Redania, um, 
she openly practiced her magic and provided her magical services to clients by staying with um, the Novigrad's ambassador. And Bo Berent, um thus granting her asylum from the law while in the ambassador's home. You know, so that way she was safe and she had a place to stay and she could practice her magic. Now, um, one morning, however, a witcher actually intruded on her sleep, revealing himself as Geralt of Riviera. And in that moment that he needed her assistance in healing his friend, Dandelion. And uh, if you don't know who guys, I'm, I'm, tr I'm sorry, but there's a lot of spoilers in this one, or at least, you know, a lot of information that I feel like you guys should know. Um, who had been who had been afflicted by a Dijin. And now what a Dijin is, is basically an evil genie, you know? And after an initially rough greeting where Geralt, however, responded sarcastically to her questions, you know, Jennifer agreed to heal, quest to heal the bard, and she secretly made preparations in hopes of capturing the Dijin after Dandelion made his final wish. Now, um... When Geralt actually tried to stop her from using Dandelion, her spell took hold of the Witcher, actually charming him to do her will against those on the town council who were against her. So, I mean, in a way, she sort of brainwashed him. Now, after Geralt was arrested, she actually used Dandelion, now awakened, and teleported out into town with instructions to make his wish to free Geralt, you know? And um, whenever Yennefer tried to capture the Dijin, it actually resisted and fought her, destroying a good part of Rinde in the struggle for the power. Now, not knowing that the, that the Dijin's master was not Dandelion, but in fact was Geralt, who still held one wish. Now, uh, when he arrived to see Yennefer struggling with her spell, he actually tried to stop her, leading her fight to one another. Now, she got the better of him and revealed her that he was the one with the last wish that could free Dijin. And unfortunately, Geralt knew that in that moment. Now, he did make a wish, but um, Yennefer would be too weak to contain the Dijin and it would kill her. So, Geralt took it upon himself to save their lives by wishing their fates were tied together. Now, Yennefer was grateful to the Witcher and um, willing to bind herself, willing to bind himself to her and the two began an open began our relationship. I was gonna say open relationship, but no, it's not an open relationship because these two are definitely a match because um, they always look out for one another, and of course, um, they do they do genuinely care about each other. Even though like all the times they've had spats and everything, they still do genuinely care about each other. Now, before we get into the fun facts, I need a drink. Ah, yes, indeedy. Okay, so, um, fun fact about her, uh, Yennefer actually graduated as a sorceress when she was only 13 years of age. I mean, come on now, that's a, a huge accomplishment in that book. And um, like Geralt, uh, she does have some years on her, uh, and it was revealed that she's almost 100 years old. I mean, wow, time has definitely been good to her. And... Um, Probably the coolest fact about her that I found out is that uh, she's also known as a conduit. Now, what a conduit is in the world of The Witcher is someone capable of harnessing the magical energy of the universe itself, but without undergoing any kind of modifications, if you will. Because um, it's like certain times where when it comes down to it, um, you would need to uh, restrict certain parts uh, in order to do that, in order to gain the energy of the universe. But she, however, she doesn't need that because that makes her one of the more unique uh, sorceress characters uh, in the Witcher series, you know? Oh, my goodness. Man, that was a lot to talk about. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But um, I want to also um, take this moment uh, to say um, thank you so much and give a shout out to... Uh, Laura Solano, thank you so much for the subscribe. I appreciate you so much for joining the Wolfpack. Welcome. Um, and if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys follow her, drop a follow on her, drop a subscribe on her. And, of course, to everybody on TikTok who dropped a uh, follow, you guys are breathtakingly awesome. And, big sh and best believe, I'm going to return the favor. And um, from here, guys, I'm going to be um, ending the stream, and I'm going to shoot over to my Twitch channel uh, to do some gaming. Uh, not sure what I'm going to play yet, but, I mean, it might keep it casual and play something small you know but um 
if you have if you like feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want um and feel free to sample either one of these videos when they do appear and um i thank everybody who come out and see me tonight both on youtube and of course on tiktok uh the link is in my bio if you guys would like to check me out more and uh, i look forward to seeing you guys next week for another riveting episode and until next time guys uh stay safe stay awesome stay weird and stay yourselves peace